Hello, in this video I want to teach you about logarithms. And logarithms are a mathematical concept, but they come into play when we talk about acids and bases, so I need to talk about them now and get them out of the way. So first, I'm going to remind you about number notation. There are different ways to write down numbers. We have normal decimal notation that you're used to, but then we also have another way of writing down numbers called scientific notation. And in scientific notation, you take a number that is small, smaller than 10, and you multiply it by 10 to some power. Three, two, one. Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you about logarithms. And logarithms are a mathematical concept, but they come into play when we describe acids and bases, so I need to talk about them now. Part one, number notation, or the way that we write down numbers. So here are some numbers in decimal notation, which you are probably familiar with. It's a normal way that you write down numbers and you have since kindergarten. But there are other ways to write down numbers as well. We can write them down in scientific notation, which you remember involves taking a small number and multiplying it by 10 to some power. We can represent any number at all in scientific notation like this. So for example, 150, I could write it down in decimal notation as 150, or in scientific notation as 1.5 times 10 to the second power. Now, this is something that you should already know, but this isn't the only way that we have of writing down numbers. We can write numbers down in so many different ways, it's crazy. Another way to write down the number 150 is just 10 to the 2.18th power. What we did is we took this information from the 1.5 in the front, and we sort of shoved it into the exponent over there. There's not really a name for this, just base 10, I guess, but this tells you another way of representing numbers as just 10 to some exponent, and it might be a decimal. Now that you know that, I can introduce you to part 2, which is what the logarithm does. Now, 150 is 10 to the 2.18th power. I just told you that. What about some other number, though? One that I didn't directly tell you. 10 to the 6.2 power. What is that? And that's probably not too hard. You could use a calculator. Here's the exponent key. So what you would do is you would take 10 exponent 6.2. And I'm assuming you left your calculator at school, so you could do it like this. Google will do these calculations for you. So if I wanted to know 10 to the power of 6.2, I could just put that into Google, and I would get the answer. This number is the answer. So 10 to the 6.2 power is about 1,500,000. Now you could do this one, even if I didn't give you the answer. But what about going the other way? What if this was your variable? 10 to some power is 0 0.034. How would you solve this? And I doubt you could. 10 to which number is a power gives you 0 0.034 is a difficult problem to solve because it involves a new mathematical concept. You have to take the logarithm of this number to figure it out. The logarithm button is right here in the calculator, but Google will do it for you also. The logarithm of a number answers the question, if I wanted to represent this number in the form 10 to an exponent, what would that question mark be? So for example, 10 to an exponent is 0 0.034. I can answer this with the logarithm. Specifically, I would take the logarithm, which is just log, of the number 0 0.034, and that'll tell me that the exponent is a negative 1.46. So let's do it with some other numbers. 10 to what power gives you a billion? Well, you could go to Google, take the logarithm of a billion to figure it out, and Google says that it's 9, and if Google says it's 9, it's probably 9. 10 to what power gives you 45.32? Well, I'll just take the logarithm of 45.32. Google says it's about 1.656, which I'll just round to about 1.66, and that's the answer. Now, if the number that you logarithmize is greater than 1, then you're going to get a positive number. So, for example, 100. That's 10 to the 2, and this is a positive number, so I'm going to get a positive logarithm. If the number's less than 1, I'll get a negative logarithm, though. So for example, 0 0.01, that's 10 to the negative 2, and if I take the logarithm of this side, I'm going to get negative 2. So finally, part 3, when is the logarithm useful? And I'll be relevant here and show you COVID-19 cases. These are COVID-19 cases in a bunch of different countries. You can definitely see the exponential shape of the curve, which means that as time goes on, you get more and more and more cases per day. This is also a graph of the COVID-19 cases in different countries, but it's weird because this is a straight line. This is a curve, this is a straight line. 
And maybe you've seen these graphs and you've been confused. This is the key. Over here, look at the axis. I start at zero and then up to 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. So every single hop gives me up 2,000 cases. This is a normal graph. This is not a normal graph. This is a logarithmic graph. Down here I have 10, and then 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million. So this graph has a different axis, where down here we have log 1, and up here we have log 6, because log 6 is a million, log 1 is 10. We use this because it gives us a bunch of detail at the lower levels and at the upper levels. It lets us fit all the information onto one graph without having some of it get very squished. Like over here, when we have very low numbers of cases, it's really hard to compare because there's not a lot of detail down there. But on the logarithm graph, we have a lot of detail down here and up here. So logarithms are extremely useful when we're dealing with quantities that can be really, really big or really, really small because it lets us fit all the information and sort of squish it down. So the log graph looks like a straight line and it gives us a lot of detail everywhere. The normal graph looks like an exponential curve and it only gives us detail at the big numbers, not at the small numbers. So I hope that was helpful.